Hey, have you guys seen that movie Split or at least kind of know what it's about? Well, it stars James McAvoy and it's all about this guy with disassociative identity disorder. The dude has a myriad of personas and it's just this wild horror film. Well, the Cars version of that is basically Davey Apex here, aka Dave Alternators, according to Mattel, aka TG Castlenut. The guy is going through quite the identity crisis, but he was perfectly fine up until 2016 when Mattel first started referring to him as Dave Alternators, changing his birth name, and then in 2018 they mistook him for TG Castlenut, who's actually the Cars 3 revolting racer, so this guy is getting his identity stolen, and poor Davey over here, his Davey Apex persona is getting buried deeper and deeper in his core, and God knows how it could manifest. I mean, if you guys have seen the Split movie and you've seen the Beast persona, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, that murderous, raging beast. <laughs> but yeah, guys, of course, welcome back to another lovely episode of Piston Cup Teams. Obviously, today we have Team Revolting. It's got me charged up, as you could tell, I'm feeling the electrons. But yeah, we have, of course, the Cars 1 Racer, the Cars 3 Next Gen and Stock Car, and then a lot of customs, right? Because Mattel did not touch this team with a 10-foot pole. They didn't even, at least as far as we know of, they didn't conceive or think about releasing any of the team members. You know, we know that a ton of other team members got canceled, but we don't even know that these were ever in the works. So yeah, fortunately, I do have a lot of customs I can contribute to this review. And yeah, let's just get right into it, you know? Maybe we can kind of keep up with the <laughs> movie references. <laughs> yeah, that movie is just wild, you know. It's a part of actually this kind of like secret trilogy that M. Night Shyamalan directed, starting with Unbreakable and ending with Glass. Unbreakable is by far the best of the three. But yeah, guys, all right. Anyways, we have, of course, poor Davey Apex here, who is now being referred to as Dave Alternators. This is the 2022 Thailand variant. I just reviewed this guy in like November of last year. So you can default to that video if you wanna see him compared to the Chinese version of him. I'll leave that in the card suggestion pop-up right there and the link is in the description below. I really like this Thailand variant. You know, it's nothing like spectacular, but I do think it's kind of an improvement over the Chinese one. I believe I articulate that in the video. It just looks a little bit more vivacious to me, even though the decals aren't quite as crisp. So yeah, Revolting Rebuilt Alternators. This guy was originally released in a four pack in like 2008 with, I think it was McQueen the King and Chick Hicks. Iconic four pack, my mom surprised me with it. And to this day, I remember the very moment that she did that. And that is why I love cars so much. It really instills, at least you know, in the younger era, some great memories. But yeah, I love his gunmetal gray rims there it's a nice contrast to everything else going on here yeah his contingency sponsors there aren't great but they look good enough revolting there 84 now his number see this also contributes to the poor well maybe even revolting as a whole and their identity crisis because they okay so in cars one the mac i car the apple racer was also 84 because that's when Apple was, I think, was it when Apple was founded or was it when they sold their first Mac computer? Something like that. 1984 is a significant year for the company Apple. So they made the number of Mac iCar and Cars 1, 84. Well, you can't really have two numbers on the different race cars, same numbers on two different cars. And so in Cars 3, they gain the awareness and decide, yeah, so Apple takes priority. And so they just kind of did a flippy do and made him 48. They did the exact same thing with Easy Idol, who became 15 because Cruz Ramirez needed 51. But yeah, I love the kind of like, yeah, I broke my T by the way. <laughs> I love the kind of like plus and minus design going on up here in the shadows. It's just subtle, but it looks really good. Yeah. The T has been broken. It's a sad day, <laughs> but we shall move on. It's a little bit pointier now, so maybe that'll actually work out better. I like the opaque windows. Cause, I don't know. It just looks cleaner to me than when you're trying to peer in at something really dark and black. I don't know. Revolting there on the back. 
see when this guy was made ROA so the eighth week of 2022 so we've almost I think we're just past yeah we're quite a bit not quite a bit but we're a couple weeks past now the birth of Davy this exact Davy Apex here this guy was born a year and some time ago all right moving on to TG Castle not here this guy's pretty rare. He was only released in that four pack that preceded the next gen racers four pack. And he was never re-released despite, you know, his name being used a couple times accidentally on Dave alternators there. But yeah, I like his logo. It's pretty much the same. It's using the same font. It's just modern. Actually, no. Yeah, the font is different. Yeah, the font is definitely different. And yeah, it's just a little bit more distinct. They added more of a gradient to it, more of a shadow, darker colors, but retain kind of that shifty matrix design in the back, which looks really good. He's got light gear now on the fenders, still has the gunmetal gray rims. Now this guy was made in China and only in China, so his contingency sponsors are nice and clean. Revolting is even one of them, but it's like orange <laughs> and it's, Kind of looks like the old logo. 48, 48. Much lighter up here. You could see the, like, it's almost like Tetris design in there way more clearly. You know, they're coming out with a Tetris movie, actually. And it's not <laughs> what you think. It's all about the inception and creation of Tetris, not like playing the game itself. Although that could be cool. What if they made a movie about, like, somebody navigating the world of Tetris? Kind of like Wreck It Ralph style. Anyways, yeah, revolting rebuilt alternators. They got on the wing back there, the spoiler rather, and then you have a camera to film the track as he's flying along. I like the white window bars. That's a departure because before you had red window bars. This guy was made on the 123rd day of 2017 at the EAA factory. So we're also coming up on the sixth year anniversary of this guy being made very exciting now i don't know when i'm gonna post this so it could have already passed by now the 123rd day of 2023 but moving on here we have the guy who replaced him aaron clocker now this at one point was the rarest next gen ever because it was only released in online exclusive five pack that went up on mattel.com and i believe amazon too but in horribly limited quantities and so when they re-released him from Thailand in 2020, people were ecstatic. I'll also leave the review for him in the description below so you could check that out. Yeah, this guy also probably was born right around the same time because he came out in, I think it was case G. Yeah, I think it was G of 2020. And man, that was right in the whole lockdown time. Man, I remember distinctly when this guy first got revealed too. Some of these memories just become so poignant. But anyway, I actually, I don't know. It's such a tough call between these two. Each of them have their pros and cons. I love Aaron's like kind of metallic, silver, almost bare metal patches like on the hood there. And then you have a stripe of it. It just looks so good and just real. Like it just looks gritty. They changed that to black and albeit it's more accurate. Not sure I like it. I do like the more vibrant red. Uh, they both have their pros and cons. It's really a tough call for me. The new one, the Thailand one's way lighter as well. Yeah, much brighter all over. I mean, the revolting text there doesn't have the like silver trim. They did retain the rebuild alternators slogan, if you will, which is kind of rare for next gen. They don't usually retain a lot of that additional text. They just really simplified everything. You have black rims now. The contingency sponsors are very hard to see, but they are there. But yeah, I just love this like chrome that they did on him. Changing it to black. I mean, it looks fine, I guess, but it doesn't have that same pizzazz, you know? You got black window bars there, which is an addition. Rookie Racing Stripes, of course, number 48. I do like the bright red, though, because look at that 48. It just really pops off more than this. That just looks like a smudge. 
You guys let me know in the comments which version of Aaron is your favorite. Now we only have one more car that was actually made by Mattel and that is the XRS TG Castlenut who also came out right during the lockdown if I remember correctly or maybe he came out a little bit beforehand. Yeah, I think he actually was a little bit before that. He was in the wave with George Newman. You know, it's funny because the Mud Racer XRS line got way more releases, multiple waves than any of the other ones. I mean, Rocket Racers got like three waves, but the third wave didn't hit the US. Drag Racers really got shafted. They they basically had one wave, but Brick Yardley, I think I got like pushed back to the quote unquote second wave and he was the only one. What else you got? Fireball Beach kind of went on for a while. Endurance too, but Mud Racers, they did a lot more than you think. I mean, you look back and you're like, wow, they did Cars 1 cars, they did, well no, they did Cars 3 stock cars, they did next gens, I mean it's just incredible. So yeah, here is TG Castle Nut. I like the red wheels there, I like the white sidebars, it's just nice contrast. Extreme Racing Series. Here's a little trivia for you. The XRS line, the whole idea of it was originally supposed to be called XRC, Extreme Racing Challenge, but they changed it. I like how the window bars are also a little tighter there, but the backs do look very similar in every other way. They did actually add that tetris -y design to the red bumper here. You can see that it's not present on just the regular version of him, so that's kind of interesting. He's also got some mud up that splashed up there. I like the mud flaps. He's obviously got real working suspension, which is really cool. Like it feels good to, it feels legit. So yeah, that's all for the legit licensed official Mattel products here. Everything else is a custom. Now these guys right here were all made by the same person. I think I'm probably going to pass them on to a friend of mine. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I did want to include them in this review. Theoretically, they should be team members for TG Castlenut because they're all 48, right? And they have kind of his style of branding, right? Now I say kind of because the person who made these customs, I know they did a great job. I could never do anything close to these, but I mean, they took a lot of creative liberties. They weren't really trying to emulate anything that was in the film. And so none of this is really like, oh, you can, I mean, you can kind of spot like revolting crew chiefs throughout the background there, I believe, especially more maybe the next gen one. But Basically what I'm trying to say is that he created these decals from scratch. He didn't like look up on Google, oh, revolting logo, download, copy, paste. Now, I mean, this is completely original and that's why it does look a little bit different than what we're used to. But he did a great job recreating it. He did a lot of creative expressions on these guys. This one, man, this guy looks absolutely livid or maybe just really concentrated. I mean, look at that lawn. That's like a Disney store frown right there. Wow. Big eyes, black hood there, 48 again, silver wheels, black bed, no taillights, no license plate. So yeah, I mean, this is a good custom for sure, but not really what I'm kind of going for in my collection right now. I'm trying to cut off some of the fat of my collection and sorry. <laughs> Yeah, fatty, man. You bit fatty. Here is the pity. These also came like damaged when I bought them, which I didn't think they would. You know, this guy has a chip and it's not even one of the worst of them. But yeah, again, you have that unique expression. He, this guy looks way more chill than the crew chief. But yeah, again, kind of a weird decision to slap this lightning bolt logo on the roof. That lightning bolt's not in really any of the other marketing. I mean, I guess you could kind of say it's a part of the E right there, but you know what I mean. But yeah, you got the wheels painted black, 48 squarely placed on there. But yeah, you could see right there, it's just not the best quality in terms of how the paint was applied. There's lots of blemishes. So I'm sure you can probably understand why I'm trying to pawn these off. Here is the tool card here. This is pretty good. It's all red. Again, I believe it was painted. It's not like they just used a Rusty's one. 
and then they slapped a couple of 48 stickers there on the side. So yeah, I'm sorry, TG, you're going to lose a couple of your team members soon. But what you won't lose is this factory custom crew chief right here or pickup truck. Yeah, I do like these quite a bit, actually. You know, they're very generic, but they're simple and they get the job done for me. They don't have a headset or anything, but you can obviously add those. I've seen a lot of people do that and they come with their fair share of blemishes as well. But yeah, this guy, I like the color of him. You know, he's supposed to be definitely for Dave Apex over here. I literally just mixed his two names. <laughs> Davey Alternators and Dave Apex are those more identities. But yeah, you got the classic logo there on him. Maroon color, 84, silver wheels. But yeah, this is, yeah, you can see the hole right there of where, because they used like a casting, a model casting of probably a crew chief that had that hole for the headset. And so when they like, I mean, I'm not saying they're using like rejected samples of, let's say, Roger Wheeler, the Dynaco chief. No, they're not doing that. They're making their own, but they based it on that like original casting or mold. So that's why they all have that hole there. But yeah, they don't all roll great. The decals are wonky. I mean, these are definitively factory customs. And definitely lower tier ones. I mean, you look at some other factory customs, especially ones we've reviewed here on the channel lately, and you have great examples of quality. I mean, you have the race, all the racing, Rusty's Racing Center Wrap customs are incredible. They are literally flawless. Mater, Luigi, Sally, and Red. Whew, they're so good. The Pink Lightning McQueen's great. You have... There's some other really good ones, of course. I mean, Andy Gearsdale is another great triumph because... Mattel never even did that character. Anyway, I think that just leaves the hauler. So let's get on to Daddy Hauler. There is a story that goes along with this guy because I reviewed him in the past on my channel a long, long time ago, maybe seven, eight years ago. And this is the same, but it's not as that. I sent it to Jim Scavenger because the decals were peeling off and I asked him to basically refurbish it. So he applied all brand new decals and kind of cleaned it up a little bit because the person who made that custom, I don't know who that one was, that was on eBay. And it just, you know, not great, you know, decals were peeling right on off. And so Jim Scavenger did a great job in revitalizing him. And so it's kind of funny. It's like vision, you know, he died. <laughs> I remember absolutely peeling off the decals for good. You know, I was scraping them off before I sent him the gym scavenger. I was killing him, but he came back to life, of course. All right, so let's see if we could detach this. Oh, that was easy enough. Now, the one thing that still bothers me about this is that the side view mirror is like blue. It's like we need to go over that in a better coat of black paint or something. Like, I don't know what's going on with that side view mirror. But anyway, we're not going to focus on that. You have the revolting logo up top. Obviously, this was made using a Nitroade crew chief. No, my God, a Nitroade semi-cab and not Eric Rodale's like the 2016 Deluxe. It actually was made using a full-on Nitroade hauler from 2010 or 2009. License plate that Jim Scavenger put is Revolt and then 84 on the mud flaps. Really nice couple additions that he made. And he obviously applied way better quality decals here. These guys aren't going to be peeling off anytime soon. <clears throat> I love how in the team text here, he even put the like lightning bolt E. I love that. I believe that's how it is, but that's just such a cool little addition there. Because he also has to recreate a lot of these decals because they're not just readily available on Google Images. Rebuilt alternators. Now, I remember last time I opened up Hauler and I think I like broke it. Yeah, so I probably won't be doing that much, <laughs> that much more opening. But yeah, you can see how you pull this out, fold the ramp down. You got some more supports that you could flip down as well if you'd like. I really... I don't do this. I never even did when I was a kid because it's so silly to me. You can't put him in there 
and then like fold it all on in, you have to put the ramp back, then put them in there. And then you could drive off with them. But yeah, it was in the last Piston Cup episode video that I basically broke the little turkey piston hauler. It's just like these things get so br brittle over time and the hinges, they could use some lubricant. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Piston Cup Teams. The next episode, for those who have stuck around till the end of the video, will be Mood Springs. So yeah, I actually recorded that one already. And the reason being because... I wanted to get rid of some more of like these types of customs and the person wanted them. And so I just recorded a whole bunch of them at once, a bunch of the episodes. And I knew I didn't want to do two episodes using like blue teams back to back. I know that sounds silly, but in my mind, I don't want my playlist to get have two blue ones back to back. That's just not, not good business. So I thought revolting would be a nice little, color change of pace and so yeah what the hell that's what i did all right guys thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments who's your favorite member of team revolting and i'll see you soon for another one bye now <laughs>